Okay, I made a mistake. Today I'm going to be telling you why I'm probably going to be returning my M1 Max MacBook Pro back to Apple. Hi, it's Matt here. So that's right, today I want to talk to you why I'm potentially going to be returning back my MacBook Pro with an M1 Max chipset inside it. Now straight away I do want to say this, that this 16 inch MacBook Pro with that M1 Max inside it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It is an absolute dream to live with and it's working exactly the way it should do. So I'm not returning it because it's faulty or things are just not working on it. Everything worked exactly the way it should. But the thing is with this MacBook Pro, I configured it with a 32 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte hard drive. Now straight away I will point out that the hard drive sort of space what you pick with any of these MacBooks won't really affect the performance at all. There's nothing really in it. They're basically the same sort of storage or just more of it and the speeds are all around about the same on all the MacBook Pros that you pick from. And that includes getting yourself say an M1 Pro or an M1 Max. There's nothing really in it on the actual built-in storage. But like I said, I decided to pick out the M1 Max, the maximum sort of chipset you could get, but with the lowest amount of RAM, which is 32 gigabytes of RAM. And living with this MacBook Pro over the last sort of few days and everything has been absolutely superb and brilliant. I've created lots of videos on this MacBook Pro. I've fiddled around in Photoshop. I've had loads of sort of Chrome tabs open and things like this, and it's been an absolute dream to live with. So you're probably wondering, well, why am I moaning then? And why am I sending this back? Well, it lies right here. And it's to do with this MacBook Pro I've got here. Now this is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro inside it. Now the thing is with the chipset inside this one, it is that 10 core CPU what you get, not the eight core baseline. And it's also got the 16 cores um, of GPUs inside it. And I've also got inside this 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that is the baseline 16 inch MacBook Pro that you can pick. And you can see that right here. And as you can see, the differences between the M1 Max and also the M1 Pro, there's an $1,000 difference. And the only main changes that you're actually getting in this $1,000 is that M1 Max, and you're getting those additional cores inside it. On top of that as well, you're also getting double the amount of storage, so from 512 gigabytes to one terabyte, and you're also getting double the amount of RAM, 32 gigabytes. And to be deadly honest, when I've been exporting, say, videos on this M1 Pro and on this M1 Max, there hasn't really been much in it for me. In the sense of that it is far faster compared to, say, the old M1 uh, MacBook Pro that I've got, and also my older Intel i9 16-inch MacBook Pro, it's leaps and bounds better than that. But for me, it's just not overall a big kind of upgrade from the M1 Pro to the M1 Max for my needs. Now, generally what I do when I'm kind of exporting a video, and this is where my MacBook Pros are at their absolute max, I'm normally fiddling around doing something in Photoshop, normally probably making the thumbnail for the video that I'm uploading or exporting to say go on YouTube. Also at the same time as well, at this time, I probably already have say, five to 10 tabs of Chrome open. And say on my 16 inch MacBook Pro with that Intel i9 that I have, and that only has got 16 gigabytes of RAM, it struggles, it gets super hot, the fans are wearing like anything, and it just can't cope with that. Now on this M1 Pro MacBook Pro that I have right here, the 14 inch, I've been doing a very similar scenario over the last sort of two weeks now since I had this MacBook Pro, and generally it's not broke a sweat. Even the fans haven't really properly kicked in. They have word a little bit, but they're not going full pelt like my old Intel i9. Yet, when I switch over to my M1 Max and I do exactly the same thing, Photoshop's open, video's exporting in Final Cut Pro, and also at the same time having Chrome open on multiple tabs, really I'm not noticing any differences between both of these machines with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. And that's what's making me think, well, you know, do I really even need the M1 Max if the M1 Pro is coping? Yes, you can see like on these benchmarks here, when I'm doing kind of an export in Hevec and also it's 264, yes, the M1 Max is faster and I'm not going to deny that. But you've got to remember, it costs a thousand dollars more to have this MacBook Pro compared to the baseline 16 inch MacBook Pro, what's the same chipset what's inside this 14 inch MacBook Pro. Cool, that was a mouthful to say. But you get the point, it's the same chipset. What's inside this, what's in the baseline, 16 inch MacBook Pro. And it's getting me think, 
that, you know, do I even need this M1 Max? I probably don't. I'm not gonna push this beyond its boundaries. Now, a lot of you are probably gonna say, well, you're only gonna get the full potential when you hit 64 gigabytes of RAM inside this machine. Well, for my needs, I don't think I will. Like I said, I used to have the 16 gigabytes of RAM in my Intel machine, and it was struggling with that DDR4 RAM. Whereas the 16 gigabytes of RAM was in this M1 Pro machine that you see right here, it doesn't even use up, say, half the amount of the RAM inside that for those tasks I was just talking about. So you can imagine it only uses about a quarter amount of the RAM was allocated inside this M1 Max. Again, for me, it's just no use actually having this M1 Max. Now, again, don't get me wrong, my famous words there, M1 Max is a brilliant thing to have and to say that I've got that and for future proofing, it's there. But generally speaking, I do 4K exports right now. I don't think I'm gonna be upgrading to an 8K camera anytime soon. And that's the other thing as well, to export in 8K, all of you guys right now, your phones, what you're most likely watching this on, or say your laptops or your MacBooks or even your TVs are most likely 4K resolution or below. So generally speaking, 4K, 8K, you're not really gonna see the benefits out there. Now, don't get me wrong, I know there are 8K monitors, I know there are 8K TVs, but they're just starting to come in and the technology is still reasonably new out there. And most 8K TVs and monitors just upscale 1080p and 4K because there isn't real true 8K footage out there. And no one is tapping on my shoulder right now to make them 8K footage and I don't think they will be anytime into the future. By the time I got rid of my MacBook Pro with that M1 Pro inside it, if I kept this one, until the next MacBook Pro that comes out. And most likely, as we all know, the next MacBook Pro will have an even more superior baseline kind of M2 Pro chipset inside it or M3 Pro chipset inside it that, you know, will run around circles around the M1 Pro and even the M1 Max. So based on those factors right now, I cannot see a need to upgrade to M1 Max. Unless you guys can actually see a reason, and I'd love to know in the comments below. Now, whilst I'm rambling on about these MacBook Pro, something else I'd like to ramble on about is the giveaway we're doing on this channel for this. It is for an iPhone 13 Pro Max in Sierra Blue, 128 gigabyte model, and I'm gonna be giving away this iPhone 13 to one lucky subscriber when we get over 300,000 subscribers. We are almost there now. I think we've only got around about 19,000 subscribers to get to at the time of making this video. So we are super duper close. And like I said, it's gonna be an international giveaway and I'm gonna be giving it away to one lucky subscriber. And all I want to know from you guys and your possibility to get your hands on this iPhone 13, and that is to write down in the comments below what gear you're planning to buy within the next year, what is Apple gear or any other technology gear write down in the comments below and when we get over 300,000 subscribers I'll be revealing who the winner is of this iPhone 13 Pro Max. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because I'll be creating a video at that time announcing who the winner is. Now quickly I just also want to quickly mention that there are some scammers and some spammers out there who are using my face as a profile picture or pretending they're me and basically saying you've won a prize. It is not me, they're scammers ignore them or report them. I'll try my best to delete them off the channel as soon as I can, but yeah, just ignore them. Like I said, I will only be revealing the winner when we get over 300,000 subscribers in a video. Well, let's go on to a bit more about my rant of why I won't be keeping this M1 Max MacBook Pro. I think if I was a person who was using Lightroom or using more intensive RAM tasks, then possibly I might keep this M1 Max. But for what I need it for, and for most video creators out there, this is my point I'm trying to get across, there isn't much point getting this machine, especially at the cost of a thousand US dollars. Yes, there are more decoders in this. There's two video decoders instead of one in the M1 Pro. Yes, there's more GPU cores. Yes, you know, if you play games on the MacBook, I don't know why you do that. Yes, the frames per seconds are gonna be higher, but personally, I don't play games on the MacBook Pro really, and it's not really promoted for that. If you're spending all that money, um, you know, on the M1 Max just for gaming, I think you're better off buying yourself a gaming laptop or gaming PC, personally, I wouldn't bother. You know, that's me actually putting Apple down there, but personally, I would actually recommend not doing that. But you get the idea. Do not buy it for that reason. But if you are gonna be using it 
for kind of Lightroom or kind of say like a blender. I've also heard also uses a lot of the intensive bits and pieces inside and also some high, high graphical kind of apps. Yeah, maybe M1 Max is for you. But for me, like I said, I'm more inclined to return this M1 Max back to Apple and not keep it. And actually what I probably will do is I'll keep this M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro, but I'm probably actually gonna buy myself an M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM inside it because this machine has been absolutely superb. But from my point of view, I prefer 16 inch screens. And for doing things like Final Cut, it's easier for me to do that on that larger kind of screen. So call me a sucker that I'm going to return this and get myself say a 16 inch version of this one, what you see right here. But that's just me and that's just my preference. What do you guys think? Do you think I should return this M1 Max and get an M1 Pro instead in the 16 inch form? Let me know in the comments below. Also at the same time guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So I'd love to know your thoughts below in the comments of like what I've just asked there, but also at the same time as well, if you have enjoyed watching this video, press the like button and also at the same time as well, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews and comparisons, please also hit subscribe and that notification bell. Until next time guys, I will see you soon. Bye bye.